All right, this will be the last part of the video on this section, I promise. And our topic is unbounded behavior. Right? Bounded is when something is controlled by a limit. Unbounded is when something gets bigger and bigger and bigger, always growing past every, any number you can think of. So you're aware that sometimes a graph has a vertical asymptote. So let's look at this particular example of the function f of x equals 1 over 2 minus x. I'm not going to worry about the exact details here, but the graph looks something like so. It gets almost perfectly vertical, and then it does something like so. And it follows but never actually touches the vertical line x equals 2. Right, so you may re remember we call that an asymptote. And f of 2 doesn't exist. If I try to compute f of 2, I find myself dividing by 0, which is impossible. So, and, and that makes sense. On the graph, there's actually no point where x is 2. There's stuff over here where x is very close to 2, and there's stuff over here where x is very close to 2. Well, we can describe still what we're seeing near x equals 2 using the language of limits. If x is a little bit smaller than 2, again, we can think about where are the points down here just on the number line. Here are some places where x is slightly smaller than 2. And they would correspond to points like so on the graph. As x is getting closer and closer to 2, these y values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and they never stop. Eventually, they're bigger than 100. Eventually, they're bigger than 1,000. Eventually, they're bigger than a billion. They grow without bound is the formal way of describing this. And on the other side, they grow without bound, but in a negative fashion. They get lower and lower and lower, more negative, more negative, eventually below negative 1,000, eventually below negative 1 million, eventually below negative 1 trillion. Here's how we talk about this using the language of limits. As we approach x equals 2 from the left, the y values get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we say the limit is infinity. Right? The, the values here are, quote-unquote, approaching infinity. Right? We're extending our notion a little bit, but that kind of makes sense. If something is just growing and growing and growing and growing forever and ever and ever, then we could say, oh yeah, it's growing infinitely big. It's approaching infinity. It, it never quite gets there because infinity isn't a real number, but that's the pattern. And on the other side, when we're getting lower and lower and lower, infinitely negative, we can say that that limit is negative infinity. So this is how we can describe growing really, really, really tall along a vertical asymptote, or really, really, really low along a vertical asymptote. So a couple of notes here. First, infinity is not a number. Right? Here we're saying that this limit is infinity, but that doesn't literally mean, oh yeah, there's a number called infinity and this limit is equal to that number. This is not a numerical statement. It's actually just an abbreviation. You can think of this as a convenient abbreviation. Right? Instead of saying something like, oh yeah, these values get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and they grow without bound, but there's no actual limit. We could say that. We sort of abbreviate that by saying, oh, they're approaching infinity. The limit is infinity. We're not actually talking about a number. We're sort of cheating a little bit to give the idea. Right? Same with negative infinity. Um, you'll notice here that I wrote this as positive infinity. If you just write the infinity sign, it's assumed, right? You're, it's implied that you're talking about positive numbers. Right, very big positive numbers, a million, a billion, a trillion. I tend to write the positive sign. It's not a bad idea, but it's not required. 
But if you have behavior where you have negative Y values growing more and more negative, you must include that negative sign. Right, and so here's our final example. Draw a graph of g of x equals 3 over x squared. And if you don't know what that looks like off the top of your head, use a computer or calculator. You'll see a vertical asymptote, and I want you to write two one-sided limits to communicate what you're noticing. So pause and actually do this. All right, so what limits did you get? The graph looks something like so. This one is undefined at x equals 0. But we could talk about the limit as we approach x equals 0. The limit as we approach 0 from the left of this function g of x, well, these values are growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we could say that limit is positive infinity. If we're approaching from the right, they're also growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we can say that limit is positive infinity. And let's just note, since these are the same, since these one-sided limits are the same, we can write simply that the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x is positive infinity. Again, that's a shorthand, but the behavior on the left is the same as the behavior on the right, so we can just talk about the limit without specifying which side. That's okay. Um, we are not allowed to do it in a case like this, because on one side we're growing infinitely big. On the other side, we're growing infinitely small. This is the Katie Heron diagram. If we were to talk about the limit, just the limit without specifying left or right of this function, that does not exist. There's no way to describe that because it's growing infinitely high on one side and infinitely low on the other side. Only when they're the same kind of infinity on both sides can we say there is a limit without specifying left or right? Okay, that is it for this very long section.